Highest rate heart. So it is the 27th of December. It is a Thursday. And every four Thursdays, I go to, there's this church, kind of, uh, I lived in Chicago long enough that my concept of blocks, like a city block, is kind of borked uh, compared to everybody else in the Midwest, because, you know, Chicago people, like, uh, so many people in Chicago um, consider a block to be a bus stop to bus stop, so um, when I say that the, uh, um, you know, whereas like everybody else in the world, like I grew up um, where a block was like, um, like street corner to street corner on the opposite end, like, you know, before you got to the next street, so you know, there would be a street, and then there would be the corner, and then the pavement would go about, like, I don't know, like, eight houses, approximately, like, in Toledo, anyway, and then there would be another street corner at another street, and that would be a block, like, that span of about eight houses, however far that tends to be, but, uh, so yeah, like, I have to think about how far this is, and it is... It is, uh, ew. uh, so, um, that's, that's probably why I seem a bit frazzled trying to say how far away this church is. It's, uh, St. John the Baptist, and my bag is right here. And, uh, so, uh, St. John the Baptist, their, uh, uh, their, uh, their street address, like, the official street address is out on, uh, Florence, but it's basically on Cross Street. It's just, for some reason, the official street address is clear the fuck on the opposite side of the building. And don't ask me why that is. I didn't design shit like this in a way that it makes no sense to anybody else. So, like I said, about every four weeks, I go to their food pantry there, uh, because while I do get, uh, food assistance, which in Michigan, it's called FAP. Food Assistance Program, F-A-P. Uh, most other places call it SNAP, Supplemental Nutrition, Supplementary Nutritional Assistance Program, I think. SNAP. Uh, a lot of people just call it an EBT card, um, Electronic Balance Transfer. Um, that's, uh, that's kind of... EBT is both the most true um, description of the way benefits are dispensed these days, but it's also a bit of a misnomer because um, uh, there are people who get cash benefits, and I'm not one of those people. And um, when you get cash benefits, that's also on an EBT card. So, when people say, oh, well, I see people buying food stamps with their, with their food, with, with, buying liquor with their food stamps card, yeah, that's, they're probably getting cash benefits, uh, because you cannot legally buy booze with your food stamps card. Now, some people may also sell this and then report it stolen a week later, um, you know, after the person they sold it to has decent time to use it and, you know, get cash illegally from their, um, assistance that way, um, but, uh, but yeah, like, literally nobody buys, um, alcohol or cigarettes with their food stamps proper. Um, if you see somebody buying something you find questionable with their EBT card, they're probably receiving cash benefits, and... Honestly, like, um, uh, I will occasionally get cash benefits, usually it's some kind of kickback with Medicare. I also used to get, like, a quarterly $42 a month, but I no longer get that because my mother died and now I get survivor's benefits from Social Security. So, uh, so yeah, my, um, I used to get a quarterly $42, which eventually ended up on the EBT with cash benefits. Technically, they say that, oh, you're only supposed to, like, pay, you know, um, your bills with this. How you're supposed to pay your bills with that? Um, 
they they do it in the most roundabout fashion. Like you know, they yeah, you know, like they basically want you to take it out as you know a cash. Like, but you can't really use it in most ATMs. So you pretty much have to go to a store. You know that will let you get cash back on a debit purchase. Um, and you know you make a small purchase with the cash benefits, and then you get the rest out in cash, um, because that's how most stores are worked out. Like, you can only get cash back if you make a purchase. You can't just get cash back like it, like it's an ATM or anything. Um, so, uh, so yeah, like, and they say, oh, you're supposed to use this for your bills or pour, toward your rent and other expenses not covered by food stamps. And technically, a lot of states will add in that other expenses not covered by food stamps or, you know, um, your other sources of income. So a lot of times I would like, I mean, I know it technically says, you know, for your bills, um, which to me, my bills is like, you know, my phone, which I'm filming on or my internet service or my electric. Uh, yeah, those are all I pay here. Um, and, uh, but like I would pay for medications with it, uh, more often than not. Um, if there was anything left in the balance after paying that week's worth of medications, a lot of times I would take um, as much cash out as possible and then get it in laundry quarters because, you know, my Social Security funds, uh, that pays my rent and my bills. And then, you know, assuming um, it's a typical month, I tend to have, let's see, and then there's like my art fire bill uh, for my shop and cat expenses and, um, so under a normal month, it's somewhere in the area of like 175. That's supposed to last me the rest of the month. So, you know, on the occasions I do, like now I think it's like maybe twice a year, I'll see something like that. Uh, most recently I saw like a $25 cash deposit, which I noticed about two days before I got a letter. So, uh, so yeah, I'm going to, uh, do this little vloggy type video that I've rambled on about for way too long, you know, just like the little sidetrack things. Um, I'm going to, uh, you know, put on my jacket and everything, and, um, sorry it's a little dark in here, because I don't like to, uh, leave with any more than, uh, this one light up there on, and, oh, whatever, there's one light, you can tell it's on. Um... Well, I've also got those over there, but those are, um, actually they're all LEDs, but the, uh, the floor lamps, those are antique, and while I do have LEDs and surge protectors, uh, I still don't want to trust them, um, <laughs> uh, on for too long, um, especially when I'm not here, so, uh, so then what was I saying? Oh yeah, so, um, just to protect other, other people's pri privacy, I'm not going to film while I'm in queue waiting for the, uh, for the, uh, the church people to let us in. It is a Catholic church, but yeah, there's this one woman, I swear she's a plainclothes nun, and because I went to a Felician school, like, the, even the concept of plainclothes nuns, and like, I've seen, you know, I, I've seen that episode of, uh, All in the Family, um, every couple of years in a rerun since I was, like, four or five years old. You know, where uh, Edith's got that friend who's a plain clothes. Well, she's a nun, but she goes out in plain clothes about half the time. And, you know, one time she comes out in, you know, her habit, which is a bit more, um, I think, Franciscans? No, it's Dominicans. It's Dominicans. Yeah, it's Franciscans who are at the school at St. Andrews um, in uh, Rochester Hills, Michigan. And I know that because I briefly worked there, like, just doing some summer renovations on the school. And I was told, you know, oh, hey, give this to uh, Sister Bonnie. I don't know. I just, I, I forget her name. Uh, I'm like, there aren't any, like, where are, the, where are the sisters? Oh, she's right there behind you on the other side of the room. Like, that's not a nun. Oh, you said you went to Catholic school. Yeah? How old are you? I was born 1980. How old do you think I am? Because I was, like, 20 at the time. What school did you go to? St. Adalbert in Toledo. Oh, they're Felicians. Yeah? I'm so sorry. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's the reputation Felicians have. So I'm pretty sure it's Franciscans, at least in the States, that are playing close. I don't think playing close nuns are much of a thing in Europe. At least that's what I hear from people. Uh, then there are Dominicans who are 
more or less in charge of uh, Siena Heights uh, University in Adrian, Michigan, which is where my stepmother works, or at least worked. Um, yeah, they have some lady there, but, you know, there are uh, Dominican nuns, and they have the more modern habits, where, you know, they've got the, uh, the little headscarf, and sometimes they've got bangs sticking out. Um, in fact, like, I think they're encouraged to have, like, some fringe sticking out in front, so you look a little bit more approachable. But then it's like a plain brown or gray or black dress with a blouse and the things and the, and the, um, and the very opaque um, stockings that, you know, are held up and, you know, but your skirt comes, you know, like mid-calf and you've got the, uh, the Mary Jane style shoes and, you know, or, uh, or orthopedics or whatnot. I think they're a little bit more lax on the shoes just because, you know, various things that, uh, uh, sisters and nuns. There's technically, like, technically, like, what we think of nuns aren't actually nuns. They're religious sisters. Um, nuns live a more cloistered life, but, you know, colloquially, it's all nuns, but, uh, uh, just because they tend to wear similar dress, but, um, but yeah, Felicians are very strict. They still wear the full habits, um, you know, with the, with the very traditional dress, and you don't really see the, uh, the little flying nun with the, with the wings up in front, um, at least in this part of the U.S. too much anymore, but you, I did see it frequently enough when I lived in the Los Angeles area, and it would usually be in, um, in more immigrant-heavy areas of Los Angeles that, uh, it, it did take me for a loop for a second. I thought, oh my god, have I, like, fallen through a wormhole and I'm in Spain now or something? But no, no, it's like, it's just, like I said, it's more immigrant-heavy. But yeah, I, there's this plainclothes nun at, uh, St. John the Baptist, and I swear to God, she knows that I know, and it just, it freaks me out every time. Just like, I can't get used to that. <laughs> I just cannot get used to that. It's just so weird. But, uh, but yeah, I gotta put my jacket on. Yeah, I need to leave to get a good spot in queue, and it's raining, so hopefully they will let us in sooner. Um, but yeah, I'm not, just to protect everybody else's privacy in queue, I'm gonna come back to this after I get back, and we can, um, see what I got this month. So you can have an idea of the kind of conditions that I live with, um, if you feel compelled to, you know, join my, uh, Patreon, or, you know, at least throw something in on GoFundMe, that would be great, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's just, I kind of wanted to give people... Um, just a little taste of what those of us, um, living on social security disability have to live with. Back, on my way back from the, uh, from the church, I would have gotten a shot there, but there wasn't a good spot, and it's really dark outside, and there's a toilet out in front of somebody's place, and I don't know if this is discarded, or if they put that there intentionally, or if they're gonna bring it in soon, but I really want it on my balcony. Again, so I know my range is a bit of a mess, but, uh, you know, that kind of shit just kind of happens sometime when you deal with chronic pain, and, uh, most of the years I've been in this unit, uh, I've been able to do a thorough enough, um, cleaning, usually around the spring equinox, so, um, and plus, I do, like, little tidying tasks periodically throughout the, you know, like, approximately every other day throughout the week. So usually at this church, the, uh, the thing is, really, cats? So you get in, you, uh, you give them your ID, or driver's license, but I've got state ID, because I don't drive. Um, so, um, so you give them your ID, and they put your name in the book, and make sure that you have indeed waited four weeks. They check your name with the book to make sure you have indeed been four weeks, or at the very least, you know, see if you've been here before. And, um, and then you go sit down. And then, um, you pretty much pick your nose or read or whatever uh, until somebody else calls you to the second table. And, um, Usually they go by first name to call you, <laughs> but a lot of times uh, they're a little intimidated by my forename, so they often go with me by my surname. A lot of times the first part of my surname, um, or uh, rather than McElroy, um, 
But, uh, uh, but yeah, this time, uh, with somebody who actually know, uh, remembers how my first name is pronounced, so, and then they point you to the table directly behind where the chairs are at the second table, and that table, uh, has got a lot of things like, uh, you know, just like spare canned goods, and boxes of pastas, and macaroni and cheese, and ramen bricks, and sometimes there's neat little shit, like, uh, like this cheap rose. this is such a cheap rosary, like, like, I can, like, I can tell by the weight alone that this is just plastic and some kind of, um, really cheap-ass base metal. Probably nickel. Um, shit, maybe even tin. It's just, it's so lightweight. Oh, wait, no, tin wouldn't be this light, I don't think. But, uh, but yeah. Um, I got this, I didn't get this this time, but I think I'm going, yeah, I'm definitely going to alter this. <laughs> um... Worst case, it sticks around for a bit longer than I think it should, and I'll put it up as a vintage item on Art Fire. Um, a lot of times, the uh, the spare canned goods, you know, it's nothing you know too impressive. A lot of times, I just end up getting like a box of macaroni and cheese, and um, something or other else, usually in a tin. Um, but it's, I, I usually grab what I think, <laughs> this is my Catholic upbringing coming out. Uh, usually I grab what I think, just like looking out at the crowd that's assembled that week, what I think is probably going to stick around if I don't take it. Like this, this is hardcore Catholic upbringing coming out, especially Irish Catholics. So, um, in fact, last month I ended up making a, uh, a lime tart, you know, just like sitting there squeezing limes. Like, <laughs> by hand. I mean, with a squeezer, but still by hand, for about a good hour and a half, just squeezing it so that I had enough juice to make this recipe, uh, because the, uh, the plain clothes not... She actually wasn't there this week. She wasn't there this week. I was disappointed. And I know, I just talked in the first part about how it kind of creeps me out that there are plain clothes nuns, but... I always feel a little disappointed if she's not there, you know? It's like, she's creepy, but she's familiar, and I know what her deal is. So, um, but yeah, I usually find myself grabbing what I think is going to stick around. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, last month, um, I was offered, uh, the, the choice between, um, picking, uh, uh, taking, because they had extra produce last month for some reason. So she's asking, uh, would you like a bag of apples? So it was about two, three pounds of apples. Little small ones, I think Macintosh, um, just looking at the skins. Um, or do you want a bag of limes? And I'm thinking, okay, limes are probably going to stick around forever because who the hell is going to make, you know, make something with this many limes? So I say to her, I'll just take a bag of limes because I don't think any, you know, I, I don't think there are too many people this week who would want to take them. And, <laughs> and I guess she, she just, I guess she saw through and saw the Catholic upbringing back there. And, you know, she, uh, she offered me, you know, she offered me a bag of apples in addition to the bag of limes, and I, I, I said, you know, I, there's, there's no need for me to have all this, and she's like, no, no, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, so I put a few extra, um, I've got a friend who's kind of between jobs, I mean, thankfully her roommates that she's got are stable enough right now that, um, they're kind of carrying the extra load for her, um, and, uh, one of her old co-workers just loaned her a bunch of money, and I know that because I ran into him. He's really cool. He's got a purple beard, and he's older than me, even. He at least looks older than me. And, um, but then what happened? Oh, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I just, like, took a bunch of extra apples and put them in a bag for her and went over to her. In fact, I've got a bag started <laughs> for her because there's a lot of things that I just don't end up using, but... I know I will use this, uh, this Amy's Organic Soups. I'm actually really impressed that this was there. This was probably something somebody donated. Um, because, you know, they do get a lot of money donated through the church for this. Um, and they use that to buy a lot of things. But you can tell sometimes when something is just some, you know, a thing that some, you know, better off person as far as income goes you know, just decides that, you know, they're going to be cleaning out their, their, uh, their pantry, and so this is probably that, and this is one of the few, um, brands where I can consistently buy their, uh, canned soup and eat it, 
but it's so expensive that I can usually get it when it's on sale. So this is my little selfish thing that I did that I don't usually do, but I figure, you know, I took those limes off their hands last month, and I've taken, like, cans of chickpeas that most people, especially in Ipsy, they're just feeling like, what the heck, heck am I doing with garbanzo beans? And, you know, and um, I've taken other things that I know you know, probably won't go too fast. And that this month was a can of evaporated milk. I know that there are a lot of recipes that use it, but uh, looking at the crowd today, I am guessing there are a lot of people who don't have the time for those recipes. This month, let's see, I've got this Lucky 7 Grain and Seed Batard from Trader Joe's. Somebody about, apparently got this on day off because it's got 12.20, so this is a few days old. Oh, I can't have it! I'm always so excited when there's bread I can eat because of a soy allergy, and I know I've mentioned this in other videos before, but soy is among the less intuitive food allergies to manage because, at least in the States, they just put soy in so much stuff just to make it cheaper. That's basically what they do, is they do it to make it cheaper. And I know that there's a lot of scarlet about soy content these days. Um, and most of it is just completely bogus. Um, uh, that, uh, that thing people talk about with, uh, with soy and Brazil nuts and this causing the allergy because it's actually an allergy to Brazil nuts. That sounds like just wacky enough to be probably on the edge of pseudoscience, but I haven't seen anything... Um, I'm sure there's, there's stuff that debunks it very thoroughly. Uh, I just can't remember the last time I read some... Oh my gosh, we've got conjoined potatoes. <gasps> conjoined potatoes. So this is, this is often what a bag of produce from there looks like. Um, it's just, like I said, last month there was like a surplus of apples and a surplus of limes. Um, so yeah, like there's a bunch of apples, there's a bunch of little oranges, there's a few potatoes. Often there's an onion or two in here, which you gotta take out and store separately from potatoes. I know there's those, um, those, those boxes that you see in like the little, you know, like country kitsch sort of, you know, decor, but you really don't want to store potatoes and onions together. That's like the worst thing for both of them. Oh my gosh, I can have this too, and it's sourdough, and it got rained on, so I should eat it fast. So I'm probably going to put the, uh, the bread I just took out of the freezer back into the freezer. There's not a whole lot of room in my freezer right now. Oh, I love these. There were a bunch of these last month. Like, I got two bags of these last month. Okay, this I know I can't have, because, and it's, it's so, yeah, right here, contains wheat, soybean, egg, and milk, and... This is a brand that does not separate out the, um, the noodle ingredients from the little salt packet ingredients, so I'm just going to assume that it could be in either one or both parts. If it was just in the flavor packet, and if this was a brand that did it, yeah, that separated them out like that, like you really ought to when you're a food company, I would just, like, ditch the flavor packet and, you know, like, make the noodles with a broth that I've got. But this is going to my friend in her bag that I've already started up. Oh, shit. Okay, so I already have <laughs> one of these. And um, they gave me three more. So, you know, I don't like the foaming stuff. So I can give that to my friend and keep these two around. Okay, and we've got a little... Um, yeah, eight ounce thing of milk, that's good for like hamburger helper and stuff. Okay, I cannot have these raviolis, so those are for my friends. And we've got spaghetti, and usually dried pastas are safe. Okay, yeah, but I just checked to be sure, so dried spaghetti, and that is going to be put away. I'm just, I don't want to keep going back and forth to my, yeah, I don't want to keep going back and forth to my, um, my, uh, my, my pantry shelves there, so I'm just gonna put things aside as I go through them. Okay, gourmet cornbread stuffing. Yeah, I can't have this, so that goes to my friend. Okay, it's yellow split peas. 
just to make sure, yeah, just the yellow split peas. So, very least, I can make a soup with this or something. I'm sure there's other things you can do with those. Okay, cheese club, mac and cheese. Okay, yeah, just milk and wheat. But, you know, I feel like being generous, so this is in the bag for my friend. Oh, I know I can't have this brand. Yep. And, yeah, this is for my friend. For my friend. Oh, and we've got another thing of milk, the shelf-stable things. So, uh, yeah, tomato sauce. Yeah, I can have the tomato sauce. I'm never going to have to buy peanut butter for the rest of my natural life. In fact, like, I could probably throw in another <laughs> jar of peanut butter for my friend. Like, I am, I am not even done with this that I got from them. And you can tell that I got this from them because I'm not a big fan of the crunchy. I really not. It's just, it gets caught in my teeth and I'm only this far down. Oh, God. Granted, I haven't had any in a while, but still, it's like... Oh. I, I know five-year-olds love crunchy peanut butter, uh, so I feel like it was kind of wasted on me, but... Okay, yeah, I can't have this, so this goes to my friend Sliced Peach. It's been a while since I've seen sliced carrots, so I think I want to keep those. And I've got a crap ton of the cut green bean. Oh, this is chicken. Can I have this? Oh my gosh. They love to throw in, like... A lot of times when it's uh, when it says it's in water, especially tuna. Tuna is really guilty of this. Um, it's a broth, actually, not straight up water. Um, and they do that so that the flavor doesn't seep out. Um, but the broth is made with soybean, so. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like when it's tuna, I always can never have uh, tins of tuna. I've got a couple tins of tuna, like really fancy stuff. Like that would be a, a tin this size, but it's like $5 and I got them on sale like two for five from uh, Whole Foods when they were on sale. So it's like they were half off. So I got like two or three of them and they're over there on my pantry. Um, and um, I don't even know what I'm going to do with them. It's just the fact that it's tuna I can have and it was on sale and I, I miss canned tuna sometimes. When I was a little kid, that was like one of my favorite things, and then like the allergy developed and I'd get sick almost every time I'd eat it. But it took me the damnedest time to figure out, you know, and uh, uh, let's see, cooked white chicken meat, water, tubes, oh my gosh, this, I can have this. Oh, whole white potatoes. Oh my gosh. I've still got a box <laughs> of this too, so this can go into my bag for my friend, and bag for the kitties for now and if they don't completely destroy it I fold it up and put it with my recycling not necessarily to be recycled immediately but to at least sort my recycling in so that way um, you know I can just dump it into the <laughs> into the containers at the recycling station oh can I have this can I have these baguettes these are hard fucking baguettes but if I use them right away Oh my gosh, I can have, I can have every bread. I can have every bread this month! <laughs> like, this is, this is how stupid I get about this. So, um, so yeah, I know I've got a lot of friends both on YouTube and on Instagram and on Facebook. And not so many on Twitter, but I know a lot of people, um, to varying degrees of friendship, uh, who are vegan or vegetarian at the very least and um, definitely advocate that as many people go vegan as possible. And I have made a video about why I'm not vegan. Like, um, in, if you don't want to watch that, uh, in a nutshell, it's basically like I have... Uh, so there's my soy intolerance to start with, uh, and then there's my budget. And those are the two biggest reasons why it is damn near impossible for me to be vegan unless I were to st restrict my diet to, like, just basically, like, beans and rice and, you know, breads and pastas with tomato sauce. And, like, don't BS me because, like, I don't know a single vegan who would stick to that exactly unless they knew it was going to be a temporary thing. Like, every vegan I know, it's like they would not restrict themselves in that way. So I find, 
You know, if somebody says, well, if you really wanted to, you could do it. You know, beans and rice are cheap. And I'm like, you don't even eat just beans and rice. So don't expect me to. Okay? Because that's, that, that's where it gets really classist. And you're basically saying that, you know, because I could, in theory, do it if I was willing to deprive myself of the things that you eat on a regular basis. Oh, well, I can do it if I just cared enough. Um... That said, it's also really hard sometimes for me, especially uh, with, the, uh, with the Adderall now. Um, it's hard for me to get hungry and stay hungry for more than, like, you know, like, there's like a couple windows of time during the day when I know I, you know, when I consciously feel hungry. And if I pass that window of time, it may be another, like, three or four hours before I'm hungry again. And, but, uh... But I have been sticking to a uh, better at sticking to a meal schedule uh, this last month, especially because of the medications I'm on, especially the uh, the diuretic for the kidney stone, which has mostly passed. My CT scan said there's an unobstructive one um, hanging out in the ureter, but uh, that's that's neither here nor there. It's just like you know, until I'm done with that um, medication, um, I'm sticking to a very um, strict meal schedule. Um, but uh. But that, I digress. So, uh, this last six months, definitely, uh, I, I do occasionally buy meat, like, not at a restaurant. Um, like, I, I buy it at a grocery store on occasion, but usually only when I have, you know, like, a coupon or an Ibotta rebate or some combination of the two. Um, pretty much just because Ibotta has become kind of a regular and consistent enough source of secondary income for me that, you know, it's it's a hard deal to pass up. It really is. But uh, for the most part, all the meat that I get from the month, like, you know, the bulk of the meat that I get from the month is from the, uh, is from the, the, um, the distro at the church up around the corner. So, um, and they usually give everybody, like, a big bag of frozen meat, and by big, I mean, like, grocery store bag. <laughs> Plastic bag of frozen meat. But they fill it up as much as they can. And this is actually kind of skimpy for for this month. My guess is, like, they gave out the good stuff, like, just before <laughs> Christmas. So those of us who had to come just after Christmas got a little screwed a bit. So we've got uh, chicken, frying chicken leg quarters. Seriously, cats? Uh, it says single parts may be added, up to 6% retained water. So, okay, I've got a pressure cooker, so these can cook up nicely, and I could probably do that. Let's see. I'm going to check to see how much room there is in my freezer um, before I cook these, but there's a good chance there may not be so much room. There's a good chance there may not be so much room in my freezer right now, so I might want to uh, let those thaw out in the fridge tonight and then cook them in the pressure cooker tomorrow, and then, um, do whatever this weekend, like, you know, let them cool off, take them off the bone, find some kind of recipe I can make, um, and then, like, divvy them up into, um, containers, um, play some freezer Tetris, and there's a reason that I really wanted, like, if it wasn't for this crown that I need to get on my tooth, I would be putting aside $50 a month, January and February, and then another 35 to 45 in March, and get myself a goddamn chest freezer. The smallest chest freezers they have at Home Depot, it's something like five and a half cubic feet, so, you know, like one cubic foot, two cubic feet, three, four, and then like half a one up there, and it's a really small chest freezer. Like, I could probably... I don't know. My back would probably hate me, but I would not be surprised if I could put this thing on a dolly and carry it up the stairs myself. <laughs> it would not surprise My back would totally hate me the rest of the night, the next day in, but I really want a chest freezer so that I can make better use of the stuff I get from the, <laughs> from the food pantry and make better use of sales and all that. And oh my gosh, I've got more pork chops. Oh, the cats are going to love me. Uh, so yeah, we've got more of these little pork chops vacuum... Uh, packed. So, um, yeah, Murnau loves pork chops. It's entertaining how much he loves pork chops. Because I find myself, like, I've never been a fan of the big hunks of fat, especially on pork. Like, there's something about pork fat that just 
it, it, it just grows somehow. So I find myself, like when I'm making pork chops, I, uh, I, I just end up trimming off the ends after they've been cooked. Um, you know, it's because you should leave them on when you're cooking them so that, you know, they get the, uh, so that the meat doesn't dry out completely. But yeah, I cut off the big, big fatty bits and, you know, we're now just going to town. He's like, oh my god, pork chop, pork chop, pork chop, pork chop. And, uh, and, uh, Phoebe, Phoebe loves it when I get pork rinds. <laughs> like, especially this one brand. It's this Fancy Pants brand that I pretty much only get when it's on sale and I have a coupon and I have an Ibotta rebate, and if you use Ibotta as well as I, as well as me, um, if you also use Ibotta, you probably know the exact brand I'm talking about. Um, but, uh, but yeah, she loves that. She'll also, t she'll also take the cheap, the cheap-ass pork rinds if I'm just, like, having a taste for pork rinds. I grew up in the Midwest, don't judge me. Uh, <laughs> like, in the South, it's pork crackling. In the Midwest, it's pork rinds, you know? I, and they're two different cuts. They're two different cuts of pig skin. Um, but it's like, you know, one is more of a thing in the Midwest, the, the other is more of a thing in the South. Uh, yeah, I should put these pork chops away. They're, uh, they're starting to thaw in my hand. I can feel it. And, oh god, that's disgusting. That's, I'm thinking about the fat. Um, uh, yeah, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. Like, you know, the only thing I've got left to do tonight is to put all this crap away, and I don't think anybody wants to watch that. So, that is... That is, um, as far as everything goes, um, that was a lighter load this month. Uh, as you see, it's not bad stuff. Um, and most of it is stuff I can use, and I'm so happy when I get, you know, these cans of chicken, because this brand of chicken, it doesn't have soy in it. Um, when it's tuna, though, when it's tuna, though, I just give that to the cats. Like, I do still check the, I do still check the tin when it is tuna, I can't remember the last time they had two. Oh, crap! I forgot to ask if they had uh, wet cat food. They often have wet cat food. And I forgot this month. I did. Th I got a couple tins of wet cat food last month and in October. But I forgot this month. I was just in a hurry to get back and film the rest of this. So, okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, like, the. Um, I mean, thankfully, uh, Redditors um, on Random Acts of Pet Food... They sent me, uh, between what I was able to get last week, um, due in part to a sale, and, uh, my friend Edward sent me a tenner, um, and I had five dollars in Petco rewards, uh, saved up, so I was able to get them some, uh, some, uh, some wet cat food, and then Redditors sent me, uh, 24 of the smaller tins, so the ones about a little more than half the size of this, so the three ounce tins rather than the five and a half ounce tins. Uh, plus, I've got some, uh, I've got some emergency wet cat food that I got at Kroger a while ago that, um, it was something like 50 cents a tin for, like, the half size tins, um, but it's not the grain-free, so that means if I use that, Phoebe is going to be gassy for the whole next day or so. So, um, so yeah, I'd like to avoid the emergency reserves if at all possible, but, uh, but yeah, I need to put my food away, and, uh, so yeah, like I said, this is, this was a pretty average thing. Um, I don't usually, um, put as much stuff into the bag for my friends in need. Uh, I usually have some friend or another who's, you know, having a bad time. Uh, so, like, you know, there's usually, like, a box or two of something like this that I can't use because of soy content. And... Um, a couple tins of soup that aren't this brand, but, like, the healthy choice that I put in there. There's usually, like, at least one of those and some kind of boxed thing, like a hamburger helper or something, or in this case it was stuffing. Um, and then there's a cereal that I'll probably, you know, never, you know, never eat because I've already got, like, two boxes of it. Um, so yeah, I usually have some friend that I just give my extras that I can't eat because of soy content, or that I just won't eat because I already have so much of it. Um, there's usually, like, um, two to three cans of fruit, and there were two of those. Um, about, uh, usually in the area of four to six tins of vegetables. Um, sometimes if you're lucky, there's a tin of meat or two. Um, there's usually one of these as well, um, because it's shelf-stable, um, until you open it, of course. And, uh, um, but this is a little oddity. Um, and then there's usually, like, two breads of some variety or another. Uh, the fact that there were three 
and they're all stuff I can eat, that is, like, unusual. That is unusual. Usually, um, usually there's about two breads, and I have to give away at least one of them. So the fact that there were three breads this time, and I get to keep them all, <laughs> that is unusual. I'm so happy. That's why I seemed very excited. Um, and then, like I said, uh, when I brought this up and my other potato, my conjoined potato uh, slipped out. There's not, not usually a conjoined potato, but I love this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some pictures of this. It's beautiful. Um, but yeah, there's usually like a big bag of produce like this. And then the, uh, the big shopping bag with some kind of frozen meat. Um, there's often a couple boxes of pasta and or beans of some sort. Um, there's, it's usually beans or rice that's in the bag of dried goods. Um, this uh, big bag of cranberry, of dried cranberries, I usually keep it um, tightly sealed. This is like the longest it's been out, out. And so... Uh, but yeah, like, I took this out. I actually, like, opened this a while ago, but I usually, like, have it... I've got some things, and... Oh, that's right. I put I put the one from this onto a bread, and I need to get another out of the drawer. But, um, but yeah, I got this out right now because I am going to um, get some bran flakes that I have and make some muffins with that and this. And this is cranberries, not raisins. Usually a lot of people put raisins in their uh, bran flake muffins. But I'm just like, cranberries work, too. Um, I might have some raisins. I don't know, but the cranberries are open, so whatever. Um, but yeah, that's usually like a fair assessment. There's usually comes some kind of little snacky kind of thing. Not always this fancy. Sometimes it's just like straight up laced potato chips or something. But, um, oh, and always at least one jar of peanut butter. Usually there's two. The fact that there's only one this time I don't know. I think I think they had a little shortage on funding this month. Either that or they gave out, like I said, they gave out all the good stuff last week. Um, cause yeah, usually December. It doesn't matter what time you go in the month. Usually there's like a big payload in December. And the fact that, you know, they're actually like short on a couple things uh, that they usually have. But yeah, like obviously this is not enough to get any one person even through an entire month by themselves. Even if they could eat everything that's in there. Um... So, uh, so yeah, like that's, I mean, it's supplementary to food, to, uh, to my food assistance, uh, program benefits. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, it's supplementary, um, but the two, you know, they go together, really. All right, sweethearts, bats and kisses, and I love you all so much, and goodbye.